Ah, we're back with some more Helldivers. Before I touch on the more fun parts of this game, I should bring up that this is a live service game. And in the last decade or so, this stuff has become well, a bit of a dirty word. People don't like live service games, they, they stink of cash grabs and things like that. In my opinion, this is not a cash grab microtransaction laden game, but you know, I'll, I'll cover more on that later. For now, I want to explain why this game kind of sucked me in a lot. The footage in the background here is just a normal Wednesday night in Helldivers where you're wandering around in a stompy mech calling down air support airstrikes on top of the filthy bug menace to annihilate them and then, you know, break down their bodies and turn it into oil to fuel the war machine. What's more patriotic than that? But first, a quick primer. What you are is a Helldiver. Which is a fancy way of saying you are an expendable piece of ordinance. Your job is to get fired down to the ground fueled by nothing but pure patriotism. And then you have to mark targets for destruction usually by this big ship up here. Very rarely are you going to be killing most of that stuff with your own hands, you're going to be calling on this ship to do it. So your only reason to be there is to be the eyeballs. You and a lot of other Helldivers. As you can see there's the ordinance being fired down to the planet below. To help you in your mission there is an assortment of weapons and armor and secondary weapons and grenades you can unlock. There is also a whole bunch of stratagems which is where the real fun comes into it. You can unlock new bigger weapons that you can call down to help you out or you can just call down you know an artillery barrage and kill everyone including your teammates. Or you know you can call down some mines and just kill your teammates if that's all you're really into. So I suppose this is as good a moment as any to get you into the things that people have problems with with this game. You see, up here in the top right, you've got all of these different numbers and things over here. Thing is, all these green, orange, and purple things, they're samples you find down on planets when you're killing stuff, and you use them to upgrade your ship itself. It makes your stratagems better, like your turrets might last longer, or you might get more shots out of an orbital barrage, that type of thing. The only way to get these is by playing the game. That's it, there's no other way. Over here you've got your war bonds. Your war bonds are what you use to, well, buy stuff out of, say, one of these packs. This is a, uh, a pack you get at the start of the game, this is unlocked immediately. And you can buy stuff in this with medals, those war bond medals. So it gives you access to new weapons, new armor, things like that. Uh, some of the things, one of the things people have problems with is, well, if you want to unlock the other packs, these ones cost these blue credits, super credits. However, uh, there's more than one way to get super credits. One of them is you can just straight up buy them. However, I haven't had to buy any yet and I've unlocked all of the two packs so far. So. As far as I can tell, if you play a lot, you're probably going to unlock these. If you're not playing much, you probably won't. I mean, I think I've got about, oh god, 70 hours in this game. So, yeah, it took me about 70 hours and I've still got money left over after unlocking these two. Your mileage may vary. But it is most definitely not pay to win. Most of these things end up being, well, for example, this is the Liberator Concussor. It's pretty much trash. Now, some people don't like this system, but the majority seem quite happy with it. It seems compared to the other live action services or live services that are out there, this one seems very nice, it appears. I have nothing to really compare it to. I never got involved in those other ones. So maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Make up your own mind. I do think, though, if you don't play a lot of this, you won't be able to unlock these for free and you would have to shell out money. But even if you do, uh, the problem is this, like, I've got access to all three of these, but I can't afford to put money into this one yet. I mean, our war bonds, the war bonds I get from playing. There's only a limit, it's, it was easier for me to get the super credits to unlock these than it was to get the war bonds to unlock all the weapons in them. So, I still need a whole bunch more war bonds from a whole bunch more killing, so that I can unlock the actual weapons I've already unlocked with the super credits. Again, mileage may vary person to person, but this is just my experience. And I've found this game quite entertaining, let's just say. The best way to explain the joy of Helldivers is just this simple explanation. This year, we have to manually adjust the valves to get the fuel to flow so we can finish this little mission. So we go down to one of these and we can go and turn the dial. And when we do it, boom, we have successfully turned one of the dials. Then we just have to go and complete the third dial and then activate the terminal. However, here's the thing. You can turn it off again. It doesn't lock open. Once you've done it, you can still reverse it again, which can and will happen to you. You will be trying to get this done. You won't remember if it's right or left arrow you have to press. Then you're not sure if someone else has already done it, and you're being chased by a bunch of homicidal robots. Mess-ups are going to happen. In fact, the whole joy of this game is that you are going to die a lot. The game is designed in such a beautiful way that you and your teammates will kill each other in the most ridiculous ways possible and you're going to enjoy doing it. I dropped in the water. Okay, so battery silo one, then two, then Wait, three. Wait, so someone, someone please shoot me. 
Uh, I'm, I'm drowned again. I dropped it. In there. I, I dropped in there twice. I dropped in there twice. Oh, that was Francis. It's not killing me, please. please. <laughs> He's like, please kill me, and then he kills the wrong guy. It's like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I got killed by my own orbital laser. Came up behind me. Yeah, that's, that's what usually gets you. Ooh. Is that Very actually sick. affordable? I really hope so. No, the samples. That's what, that's what we get samples. for going in. Dude, what's oh, yeah, right. right. Dude. Nope. Sorry. Oh, charger. Oh, Francis! Francis, why? What did they hit you with? I don't know. Probably a mortar. I, I think he's taking the resurrection route. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, boys. Now, the game devs could have patched a bunch of this out. They could have made it less likely that you're going to kill each other, turn off friendly fire, a, a whole bunch of stuff. There's things they could have done, and then just cranked up the difficulty of the enemies and still have you die roughly the same amount of times. But they didn't do that. It is not enough for me to simply kill you. The core of the game is four-player co-op, which is why there is two hell pods here and two hell pods here. Everyone hops into them at the start of the missions. What if you don't have any friends, I hear some people say? Well, no problems there either. For example, out here on the world map, I could just hit R to do a quick play and it will load me up with whoever is looking for a mission anywhere on any planet anywhere. However, I, I probably wouldn't advise that. I would normally you need a particular loadout for different types of enemies or different types of maps. For example, if you're on a hot map, you don't even bring in a laser rifle. If you're on a cold map, maybe that would be something you'd be into. Or you can just go in and say, select a sector. There's 75,000 people on this planet right now. There is 205,000 here, so just say I want to play this map, select it, and I can hit OR for quick play. It'll pair me up with whoever is looking for support at level 7. The difficulty level you choose will be locked in, and the map you're on will also be locked in, and you'll only team with people on those planets. I've never had to wait more than, what, 15, 20 seconds? There's just so many people playing this game right now. That may change in the future, but right now, very easy. However, if you would like to pick your own mission, you could say select one, I uh, go select it. One second while we move to that system. And now that we're on the planet, you'll see that these drop pods are all prime for people to step into them. Uh, now, I have set this to private at the moment, so it's friends only, so no one, no randomers are going to join me, but my advice would be, when you do select the mission, go in and go into the pods immediately. Once you're in, you'll have to check the, the location you want to drop off at. You can wait in here until other people join, and then they will have their own little cursors, but only the person who hosted the game can select where you spawn. Normally, depending on the difficulty, on at least the up to like level 7 or so, I've seen it that people will try and clear out the entire map. Kill all the nests, clear all the objectives, clear all the side objectives, and just wipe everything in the 40 minutes or so they have on most missions. So usually what's happened is, oh, let's start here and rotate around, clear everything out, and then end up back at the extraction point, or something along those lines. Even if the language barrier is there, you can usually get by. A lot of people do have voice, but not everyone, so you may end up on some silent teams that will be communicating with the chat function. Uh, that is brought up by the enter key when you're in-game. Then after you've selected your location, you get to pick all of your different stratagems. You won't have all of these available to you at the start. You unlock these by basically getting requisition. Every time you complete missions successfully, you get requisition and you can spend it on unlocking new stratagems. You will unlock all the stratagems before you lock out anything else and then you'll just have it sitting there doing nothing. At the same time, you've also got these other things, your boosters and stuff, They'll you'll figure it out as you go along. Oh, one thing that's not quite obvious is you can change your equipment in here. If you want to change your armor or your primary sidearms and things like that, you can do it from in this section. That escaped me for a while, so just remember that that's there. And now for strategies and efficiencies. Not quite stratagems, we're just talking about what kind of strategies you should take to go from the beginning of the game to, well, later on in the game. Get yourself a grenade launcher and a supply pack. They're cheap, they're easy to get, and they're very good at taking care of most of the mobs you'll be encounter on the lower to mid-level difficulties. You can even take you up to high levels if you want, but uh, let's just skip on to how do you grind out some of the things you're really going to want. For example, when it comes to these ship modules, they're, some of them are pretty expensive, and early on you're going to want a lot of the basic samples. Those basic samples are what you're really going to need, and after playing around for a bit, I have found the best way to get those basic samples is... Head over to Terminated Space. Doesn't really matter where, pick a planet, anyone will do. Uh, go down all the way to Trivial Difficulty, then find yourself an oil 
mission. Now it has to be a particular type of oil mission. This one has too big of a map. Let's find a smaller one. But one mission remains. There we go. This is the tiny oil mission. There's, It's always around. You've got 40 minutes to do it, but more importantly, you don't need the 40 minutes. For this mission, we're going to drop right on top of the oil pump for stratagems and stuff to bring with you. Just, well, speed or pretty much speed is preferred, but anything will do. And for stratagems to bring with you, I usually grab the Stolworth machine gun and the shield generator, but honestly, they're not really necessary. So with that done, we'll just ready up. Now, we are going to be landing right in the middle of an oil refinery. Try and land on one of those filthy robots if you can. And the first thing you're going to do is kill them. Now remember, this is the easiest difficulty. So it should be pretty handy. Damn it, he got off a flare. While we wait for that ship to show up so we can kill those guys. We'll just start the terminal. Oh, here they are. It should be fairly handy. There'll be four guys that... And then we get to start activating this. Now, you will have to turn on the valves. This is probably the slowest and most annoying part about it, but while you're doing it, you can grab all the samples. You see, the great thing about this map is it's so tiny, all the samples are 90% of the time located in the, uh, the pump and the extraction zone. There's nowhere else for them to spawn. So, uh, we already have one sample. Let me just have a quick look around. That's two, three, four. There's five and six. There's seven and eight. Nope, final valve. Then we just come back here, activate that. Another and we're done. We just have to exit. Now, if you're on the PC, you just hold down the right click, mouse click, and uh, hold on the right mouse button when you've got the map up, and then you can left click on a location to put down a pin. It just makes it easier to find your way out. The reason we picked the Scout Arbor is it allows you to sprint more, which means the running takes less time, and there's a sample. Let's just grab that on the way by, which means we only need five more samples, and we've got them all. We immediately call in the dropship so that it starts coming down. We have two minutes before that arrives. And then while that's coming down, we go grab more samples. There's one more. That's another. That's 11. 12. Occasionally bots will show up. Kill them. Now, where are those last two samples? Now, there might have been a graveyard. There occasionally is a graveyard on this map, and the graveyard will have more people on it, or more samples on it. I am not bothered going out finding it. It's too much effort. When the ship starts coming down, try not to be near any bad guys. If you want, you can continue looking for the last samples, but honestly, you're usually better off just leaving. Anyway, that was 12 samples in about 6 minutes. That allows you to get an awful lot of the basic samples very quickly. As you can see though, this only scored us one war bond. However, your squad doesn't have an impact on the war, so you're still helping the war effort while doing this. So bonuses all around. As well as that, I would like, uh, advise you to leave this open to other people joining. Other people can join you, join in with you and help you search and help you finish the mission even quicker. There's actually a whole bunch. Of, I find people at level 30 doing those missions quite regularly and pe even people at level 50 who are just grinding out the last few uh, things for their ship. Before I go on to this next bit, I really feel like I have to put an asterisk on all of this. You see, efficiency is all well and good, but fun is usually more important. So before we go to super samples and how to obtain them, I thought I'd go on to just how I prefer to just play the game in general. And usually how I get most of my stuff is I will find a bug planet, then I will look for a blitz mission. Here we are. This is a bug blitz search and destroy. It takes 12 minutes, locate and destroy terminated structures. It's a 12 minute long mission. There's lots of killing of bugs. There's lots of scrambling around. There's loads of good samples. It's usually one of the best all run missions I've found just for reward versus time investment. And it's fun, and it's difficult, and it leads to a lot of good situations. Then there's also the Eradicate Terminated Swarms. I prefer to have one of those. You normally get a three set of missions if you're doing any difficulty above, I think it's six, or is it five? Oh, whatever. Well, once you get up to three levels of missions, I prefer to have one being Eradicate, one being a Blitz, and then the third one, I'll just eat it, whatever it is. It may suck, but it's the, the thing is, I don't want to do three 40-minute long missions. That's just too long. So normally, these three combined will usually set you back about an hour of your day, maybe a little bit longer, depending. And done. So that would be my preferred thing. So all of this optimization I'm mentioning here, it's completely optional. You can just go do Blitz missions and all the other missions and have fun and just get the samples. And I definitely recommend it. It leads to a lot of fun moments. However, right now, we're going to go into getting super samples. Now, super samples are actually not that hard to get your hands on. Um... In fact, rare samples are the hardest ones, but we'll come back to those. For now, we're going to pop over to Automaton. Not Turbated Space, Automaton Space. And we're going to get the Dropnir. Uh, actually, no. 
Malevolent Creek is my preferred one for this. Malevolent Creek, uh, this is a lot more forest cover, and what we're looking for is a blitz mission. Well, we found a blitz mission. Unfortunately, it's in the dark. Uh, if you look at the planet map, you can see where the sun is up, and you can see where the sun is down. And if it's dark on the map, then it's dark when you're playing. All right, let's do a blitz search and destroy mission. The reason we want this is it's 12 minutes long. This is going to become very important. Another thing I should point out, to access level 9 missions, you need to have actually finished successfully a level 8 set of missions, as in all three of the level 8 missions combined to do a full set. I would advise you to go with grenades and just go into the public lobby and help with other people. You'll find a good team at some point and you'll be able to, you'll be able to knock it out. Even if they have to carry a little bit. All right, when it comes to drop down, I normally drop in the extraction zone. Namely because it's normally safe. If it's not safe, which can happen, then maybe find another mission or maybe drop outside it and hope things don't go too horribly wrong. Do you think you really need to care about is grabbing Eagle Smoke. It has a three second cooldown. Uh, you can also use Orbital Smoke Strike, but that one takes 100 seconds to recharge and this one you get three uses out of it. You should only need to use this once or twice unless you mess up. Then I usually go with the artillery barrages because I just like them. And they're quite useful for this. Also, UAV Recon Booster. If you have access to this, grab it. It's not essential, but I would recommend it. Equipment-wise, go with Scout Armor. The reason you're going with Scout Armor is it gives you reduced range in which enemies can detect the wearer by 30%. This will keep you alive. Uh, enemies can normally detect you at a range of 50 meters. It used to be 45, they buffed it. To stop people doing what we're about to do. Or to re reduce the effectiveness of what we're about to do. However, wearing this will reduce the range, rate of, uh, the range in which they can see you, assuming you're standing in front of them by 30%. Also, if you're crouched or prone, that also helps, which we will be doing a lot of. Uh, then we're going to ready up and we're going to drop down. Oh god. That looks like an automaton base. Run. And then the first thing you do is you turn off the torch. I don't know if that helps, but I do it anyway just out of sheer habit. Anyone chasing us? No, we appear to be good. Well, that's the problem. We need to clear this before we leave, which is why we brought the artillery strikes. One second while I maneuver us into a better position. Well, we have circled all the way around the base so we can get a better angle on this. And this is why we brought the orbital 380 mil. That should hopefully clear out that area. And we run. Uh, let's see, what's the best direction? Yep, this one over here should be good. Then we grab Eagle Smoke. Give that a bit of a distance. Anyone following us? Yeah, that's great. Cavalry inbound. Then that smokes up the area. We run through it. Bots lose track of you. So anyone that was following us should stop, or anyone that was thinking about it. Now, one great thing about these areas is they're static, as in there's sort of guards that guard the area, and if those guards die, they will not respawn. However, any fresh summons will... Ooh. We've got more stuff up ahead where they look like they're going. Mm, that's unfortunate. Someone found us. Damn it. We'll zip through here real quick. Right, we're well hidden. Unfortunately, the map has now hit Iron Storm stage. Uh, this happens on this map, and when it happens, it knocks out your map, and it knocks out all your stratagems. You can't use either. So, while that's going on, I'm going to see if we can't find the rock we're looking for. I think that might be the rock we're looking for. Actually, no, minor place of interest. Let's go. Meters. It's close by. I'll uh, explain it more when we get closer, but this is the rock that normally contains the super samples. Meters. Now, let's just wait until that patrol goes by. And the key to this is to not rush. You are in no rush on this map. All you want to do is get the samples and get out. Ah, there it is. That's the affectionately called Knob Rock. Uh, we have to get there, and you can see it on the map there. That's what it looks like on the map. And if you're close enough, it usually comes up as a place of minor interest. And we'll just have to wait until that patrol goes by. Dear God, would you guys hurry up? I think robots would be more efficient about walking. All right, they've buggered off. Let's move in. Found something. Five minutes remaining. I repeat, five minutes remaining. Done. That's it. Six super samples obtained. Now it's time to go home. Tagging map. Northwest. Two hundred meters. Ugh. 
still occupied and there is some stuff between us and them. One annoying thing about this is sometimes when you clip over a rock it'll kick you out of crouch mode and that can be absolutely fatal. Hmm, I wonder what's in this place over here. You know what, let's find out. Found something. Oatmeal. Well, still totally worth it. I got to kill bots. Well, as you can see, a whole bunch of stuff is still left behind, so... The hell? Let's, uh... Throw in some more. Now the plan is to get as far away from there as possible. You see, the thing is, once you go beyond a certain distance, the reinforcements despawn, and all that's left is the guards. So, if you get stuck in a situation, this is like the worst case scenario, where there's a whole bunch of uh, robots tapped out on your, your extract. Just run away. Uh, well, call in an orbital strike, and then run away towards the edge of the map, or as far away as you can get. Uh, and there's some of them still coming straight for us, so let's get moving. And run into the trees. This is one of the reasons I like this map. The trees help break line of sight. Okay, perfect. And you notice we've killed all the spawners and fabricators in there. Another thing you can try and do if you don't have a whole bunch of stuff on your spawn point is you can try and actually knock out fabricators by calling in an artillery strike on some of the big spawn locations. And it is quite possible to actually complete the mission and extract with the samples. As long as you call in artillery strikes and run away. Basically hit and run tactics. Uh, it's sort of the best method I've found so far of actually completing the mission and getting the relics out. So as you can see, the spawn point is still occupado. We can tell that because we're wearing the uh, recon armor. The recon armor allows us to do radar pings around wherever we place a ping. That way we can... Ooh, second, let's make sure we're not going off the map here. So we want to make sure all of that stuff is gone before we go back. And we're going to have... What? Two minutes? Two and a half minutes? Maybe four minutes, depending on if there's a certain things on this map. If there's anti-aircraft batteries on this map, I think it doubles the time it takes for enemies to, or for the dropship to come back. Uh, let's see. Uh, the area is clearing out. Yeah, they're all buggering off. Still, I want to make it an extra few tiles just in case. Perfect. Now, that was why we picked this mission. It's a 12 minute long mission, and because of that, it quickly ends, and then we get the automatic extract. We don't have to summon anything in. If we have to summon stuff in, we will get mobbed. We would prefer not to get mobbed, so we don't summon anything. Now we just have to hide out near the extract until the shuttle arrives, and not draw any attention to ourselves. If we cause any aggro right now with anyone, we will get swarmed and killed. So you need to make sure nothing sees you from now on in. The moment that count the shuttle is inbound, make sure you're invisible. Don't risk anything. Well, that doesn't look good. There's still two bots in the center. The rest of all buggered off. I think they're patrols. So, we'll wait here until the patrol is gone, and then we're going to try and sneak around the back of the mountain and get to the extraction point. We could try taking out the bots, but if we do, that could cause us to go into an awful lot of problems. Yeah. I might be able to take out that front guard silently. It's a risk. This is a dumb risk I shouldn't be taking. I should just keep on going. Oh, bugger. Okay, okay. No one seems to have noticed, for now. Checking the map, we're still... Oh. There's a patrol headed this direction. Yeah, I do not want to tangle with whatever patrol is down there. Yeah, they've got big bots and stuff. We're just going to hide down here and hope they don't come looking for us. Normally, if you had time, you'd go around and you'd scan the whole site and try and find some rare things, but I'm not seeing any. Are those guys smoking? Yeah, those get clipped by an earlier artillery strike. Yeah, that's an awful lot of mess right there. I am not tangling with that. This is why it's much easier to do this when you're playing stealth. Ah, perfect. There's a ride. Let's go. And done. And that's six super samples done. Takes you about, what, uh, 12 to 16 minutes? However, it is technically classified as a defeat, so, um, 
Yeah, the true, lo true people who are, are loyal to the cause would never use such methods. Anyway, but like six super samples, how can you say no? And usually you can get about four to six rare samples as well while you're doing it, unless you happen to spawn right on top of an enemy base with the extract, which was kind of unfortunate. They, usually they don't, they aren't there, but definitely bring some artillery to help you out. The next thing we're going to look at is warbond farming. That is a little bit trickier. That's the stuff you use to buy the weapons and armors and grenades and all of that stuff. The thing about it is, you can normally just do regular missions, which is very recommendable, but if you want to get it the fastest way possible, the fastest way I have found is to find stashes on Trivial Map. Find a Trivial Map, go down, explore it, and find all the secret stashes on it. And what you're looking here for here is Warbond Medals. However, not all maps are created equal, so you will have to run around for a bit and try a bunch of Trivial Maps until you find one that's got about three Warbond Medals close together, preferably. If you can get four, great, but three was about the best I found. Then you simply land on the planet as close as possible to the war bonds, get all three of them or four of them as quickly as possible, and then quit the game. You don't actually exit the mission, you just quit the game. The reason being is after quitting the game or after quitting the game and then loading it back up again, the mission is still there and you can repeat the exact same mission, meaning you land right back down, all the same war bonds will be there, you can grab the war bonds and do it again and again and again. It is incredibly mind-numbingly boring, but it is possible to do. Now, I spent about 19 minutes doing this, and I got about, on this particular map, and I got 48 war bonds in 20 minutes. Now, I just rounded up to 20 minutes, and assuming it takes you 20 minutes to do it each round, or 20 minutes to get 48, that's about 144 war bonds an hour. Which means in about 10 hours, you could knock out the entire, well, you could knock out at least one of the war bonds we've got currently going on, the main one you start with. So it's hell of a lot faster than doing it the manual way, but it's it's honestly too boring. I, if you desperately need a weapon or you desperately want a weapon, then yes, it is a way to do things, but I would not recommend it. I should point out, when you pick up those Warbond medals, they're automatically, like, they're added instantly. You don't have to wait for extraction, which feels incredibly broken, and I'm pretty sure they're going to patch that out in the future. In, in these runs, I'm getting like seven, eight, sometimes occasionally nine Warbonds on a mission that only rewards a single Warbond, and we're not even finishing it. It's it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, don't bother collecting samples or anything else. There, You can't extract with those. That just leaves us with rare samples, and unfortunately, there is currently no defensive missions available. Uh, when you're trying to liberate planets, you'll see here this is a liberation campaign. Liberation campaign. All of our campaigns currently are our liberation orientated. None are defensive. So unfortunately, or well, fortunately, whatever they've been looking at, we can't get access to the mission that gives you the best rare samples. But I can show you the missions, what the mission would look like and how it would display itself. It would display as uh, something like this. Emergency evacuation. Evacuate civilians trapped deep in intermittent swarms. Similar to that, except evacuate scientists. The evacuate scientist mission is the best one. It has a tiny map. It says it has a 40 minute timer, but actually it's only a 12 minute timer. That will probably be fixed, whatever. But the evacuate scientists, very small map, but it still has the exact same amount of samples, but in a much tinier area. Ignore the mission, go around the outside edges, it'll be very, very dense with points of interest. Go explore those points of interest, you will find, I think at one point I found six very rare samples in a single point of interest. It was mental. So yes, harvest those as much as you possibly can. If the moment a defensive map comes on, ignore everything else and go straight for them until you've got all the rare samples you need. This bit is a little bit odd and suspect. Sometimes when you hover over places of interest, it will pop up on your map. I have found this to be very, very inconsistent. Sometimes they'll pop up, sometimes they won't. I don't know if it's the UAV recon booster that does it. It seems to happen sometimes with that, sometimes without. Uh, it depends on the map. Maybe the map has storm clouds or not. But sometimes you'll just hover over something, it'll show you minor places of interest. Other times, nothing at all. But going along with that, if you look up there at the very top of the map where the compass is, you will notice that there is two question marks. That means there is a point of interest within 50 meters of you at that question mark. So if we start running this direction, There's something and here. boom, point of interest has been discovered, and then you get to open stuff up. As well as that, if you see that light in the distance right there, that is visible from pretty much anywhere on the map. Uh, there you can see another one over here. And I think, yep, there's one straight ahead of us as well. This is a handy way to find little loot crates and loot boxes. Uh, they will also, once you get within 50 meters, there's another question mark show up in front of you. Very fa handy for finding resources and weapons. I have covered most of the good stuff, so let's get on to the bad stuff. There's not a lot of mission types. Once you hit level 5, you'll be doing 3 missions per run. Well, you don't have to, you can quit at any time, though you won't be helping the war effort, traitor. Uh, if you go into the, you can see, just conduct geological right. survey, launch ICBM, and then there's usually an eradicate terminated structures to reduce their numbers or 
a defense mission where you actually have to hold them off for a bunch of time and kill something like 450 depending on difficulty level or so. And if you look around, it's pretty much the same everywhere. Conduct geological survey, blitz search and destroy, launch ICBM. Oh, here's retrieve valuable data and drop it off. Enable 710 extraction. 710 upside down just spells oil, so yeah, they're, they're being super subtle here. But yeah, oil extraction missions. But all of these, there's not a, going to be a huge variety. The main meat and veg of this is the shooting, the dropping of airstrikes, the calling in of orbital barrages, giant laser beams from space, and killing your teammates and each other. I don't think you would classify this game as AAA. It sells for about 40 bucks, I think, and it's, well as that, it has a much smaller team of about 100 people. It's definitely not indie, but I'd say like a AA game, somewhere in the Senua's Sacrifice level of uh, production quality. There's still a few bugs, few server issues, few crashes, few kicks. Nothing too major, I've generally just not been too worried about it, and most people seem quite happy. God knows how long that'll last. But for now, it's a game where you can kill your teammates and they don't mind, they can kill you and you won't mind, and it just seems to be they've managed to create an environment that's quite happy and fun, the way games are meant to be. One thing to keep track of this is deaths. So Helldivers KIA is actually a number there on the left-hand side of the screen. 17 million. I believe 7 million of them died retaking the Umulat sector. That's, um... That's a lot. And each one of those deaths is a player who played and lost a life. Anyway, I have a Bile Titan to kill to gain my personal order for the day and grab my 15 medals, so if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna find myself a Blitz mission on one of these godforsaken bug planets and get to shooting. And I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a look at the game slash mechanics of Helldivers, and uh, good luck. Second one. Oh my god. Juicy. Oh, what? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh, God. Oh, wow. The world is on fire. It's beautiful. And my corpse was getting kicked around by a... <laughs> a bile type that should have like scraped me across the ground. <laughs> uh.